friend of mine had come back from Istanbul and he had a couple of thin plaques of hash in his, in his money belt. He said, it's cheap, we sell it on the street. I thought, hmm, that's an interesting idea. And uh, next thing I know, I was heading towards Istanbul to uh, bring some hash back. Seemed like a good idea at the time. The PLO had just blown up the jets and people were beginning to get searched and body frisks at the airport. And in I strolled with uh, four pounds of pot under my arms. I knew my whole life hung in the balance and this guy started to search me and he, he hit the hard plaques under my arms and he kept going. <laughs> and he hit these hard plaques around my waist and he kept going. Again, down my legs, towards my boots. His, his gun was literally shaking. And then he, he lifted my sweater up. And it, it took him a moment, but I could just see the change on his face when he realized he said, Esral, which is the Turkish word for hashish. And they were all so happy and relieved. All of a sudden, oh, good, it's just Esral. It's not some mad bomber about to hit the switch. And everybody was all relieved except me because it was the beginning of a very long five years, which strangely enough, uh, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, I learned about strengths and weaknesses in jail that I didn't know before, and I don't know that I would have learned on the path I was heading. And I discovered things in prison that, to this day, I'm still happy about that I found and that I'm still using. The fact that my mom suffered every night. I mean, I go to sleep every night thinking, she's having to deal with this. By far the worst part of prison for me. Not the dirt, the violence. I can handle that. It wasn't fun, but I can handle it. It's knowing that these people who love me were suffering for what I did. That's the worst part of jail. The difference between talking about escaping and actually doing it, again, a, a, a vast abyss of pain and fear. It's the title of my second chapter in this book because that's what it was. Easy to talk, but you don't want to try it because if you get caught, you get beaten merc unmercifully and then your sentence gets increased. I got home here on a Friday and by Monday I was meeting with literary agents to write a book. It's what I, I was a journalism major, I was an English major, it's what I was doing in college. One of the reasons I went on the road was to get life experience so I could write about it. <laughs> Again, surprise. The book suddenly became a film, which is a huge thing. So I did a, a book promotion tour all around the country and then a year, year and a half later, I did the film promotion tour all around this country and six other countries talking about this stuff. And I'm still talking about it. Midnight Return is released now because two years ago, Locked Up Abroad came and said, we want to do, this is a TV s series, and uh, the sixth season starts tonight. The first show of the fourth season two years ago was uh, The Real Midnight Express. It was me telling my story. I think Midnight Express affected so many people because it came out in 1978. It could have been a lot of people, anybody who's traveled, anybody who's been through customs, anybody who's got a teenage kid who might be going out into the world, they all, this reverberated through all of them. 